Now this is a project 14 for element 14. And you can see the 3D printed stand with the nice little display that shows what I'm doing. And of course if I was doing a design challenge I would switch it over to a design challenge screen. Or if I was doing a road test I could just switch it to a road test. But in this case I'm doing a project 14. And you can see some of the parts for the project in the foreground here. And of course what we have is a breadboard project to try and make breadboards a little bit easier and quicker to use. So naturally you're going to need some DuPont jumpers and a case to hold all the breadboards and little parts. Over here we have a little box of transistors, a box of LEDs, a box of resistors, capacitors, and so on. But this is the case. Um, I use these clear shoe boxes for everything. So why not make a little portable breadboard kit from that? And of course to turn the case into a, a toolbox, I built a 3D printed handle and it just snaps on and grabs the case and you can carry it around and of course you can easily slide it off the handles are actually made out of two parts which just slide together here and snap in this is a slightly different design so it seems to grab on the same way but there's a little hook at the front here so that when I slide it off the end I can open the lid with the hook. So let's talk a bit about the other components and parts of this kit. So of course we have the DuPont jumpers and of course we're going to need a breadboard back here I have a component tester on its own little 3D printed stand and of course we have a voltmeter back here and a portable power supply this portable power supply has two 5 volt uh, USB outputs which are quite handy for charging up the the component tester or my little oscilloscope back here and of course it has regular banana plug outputs for other voltages and this is a little oscilloscope again a 3d printed case that goes on to a hockey puck and this little oscilloscope has several channels on it and an a digital output or an, an analog output actually it can output any voltage and waveform so there's four channels there's a a neat little package not very high frequency but um, pretty good for audio work and very portable and of course we have a few little things here like uh, little speakers that we would use to connect up audio systems to the breadboard also in 3d printed cases uh, one of the things I'm going to do just to demonstrate this is to hook up a speaker and see how that works but getting on to the breadboard side of things let's zoom in a bit on the breadboard There we are. You'll notice that I have three circuit boards hooked up to it. 
Um, these have slightly different configurations, but these little circuit boards um, add standard connectors to this to the red board so that we can connect up standard outputs or standard instrumentation or uh, peripherals. So for example, on this card we have banana plugs on the end. We have some pin jacks between them. And I'll demonstrate those in a sec. There's all a BNC connector here, a USB connector here, an RCA connector, a 3.5 millimeter stereo jack here, and a barrel power connector here. Behind that, there's a potentiometer, there's a slide switch here, another slide switch here, and a push button here, and there's a little LED indicator down, down in there. This card is similar. It has a uh, vertical banana jack so that uh, they don't get in the way of the other connectors. The two pin jacks here. It's showing three BNC connectors, a USB connector, the 3.5 millimeter stereo jack, and the same two slide switches and push button switch and LED indicator and the final card here is built up with um, the two banana jacks uh, vertical again with uh, three RCA audio jacks and of course the USB power connector well it's a full USB connector but I would normally use it for power um, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack there's two slide switches and a push button and a potentiometer. Now all the tracks on these circuit boards are visible on the top surface here so you can see what pins are actually connected to each signal coming from all these different connectors. There's a ground on the bottom but uh, all the signals are showing on the top here. You can see what the switches are connected to. And they're also labeled uh, on the silk screen. So you can see which pin is which on the silk screen. Now I've 3D printed this carrier plate uh, for the breadboard. And I've joined three breadboards together. There are mounting holes to hold this these little cards to the breadboard or at least the breadboard base and of course these things screw into the chassis card okay so those aren't coming out and that gives us a firm basis to plug in connectors. These are just two little audio amps which have pins connected to them so that I can plug them in here. Okay, I've wired up a couple of amplifiers here. These are actually stereo amplifiers but I'm only using one channel on each. This amplifier is using I'm using to drive this speaker and it's being the signal into it is coming from this little mp3 player at the moment this connector is the USB connector on this side which is bringing in 5 volts to the amplifier and that 5 volts is coming from this power supply over here which has two USB outputs two 5 volt outputs the other one of course is going over to this amplifier amplifier is being used to uh, amplify this microphone which is monitoring the sound coming out of that speaker and I'm going to be able to change that speaker uh, for one of the this is a a paper cone speaker and this is a plastic cone speaker I can swap them and, and decide which one I like better but I want to see what the, the uh, frequency response is from the speaker so I'll be able to see where this speaker frequency response dies off so what else do we have we have um, 
this RCA output jack here is actually connected to the speaker. So this is the signal generator that's coming through this capacitor into this amplifier when I put this jumper over here. This BNC uh, connector is going to this, the oscilloscope and it's monitoring the output to this speaker. This BNC connector is monitoring the output of this amplifier, which is also feeding this output, which is going to this speaker. So I can, I can listen to this speaker and see if the microphone is picking up the same sound that's being played over on this speaker. So there's a lot of connectors employed here. I don't know if you can imagine what this would look like if we had all of these scope probes attacking the circuit and all of these other speaker connections and power connections all wired into the board with normal jumpers and, and clips and so on. It would be quite a jungle, quite a spaghetti factory. One thing I want to point out is how this voltmeter is connected. So this is the voltmeter and it's connected through these pin jacks here which can either be which can either accept the probe going in sideways or they can accept the probe going in vertically. And that's a very neat way for a, a voltmeter to be able to uh, monitor what's going on in a circuit because you can use your standard probes and just stick them in here and then wire up to the probe from the circuit uh, as you would normally do. So let's turn it on and play some music. So this is the volume. Here. Turn that down and put the microphone over at this speaker. You should be able to hear the other speaker. Okay, I can turn the volume down on that. And it actually has a, a switch to turn it right off here. Um, but just to point out that I have wired up the LEDs. I don't know if you can see them, but they're certainly on and showing that there's power on each of these cards coming into the circuits. Uh, some things that I haven't connected, of course, are the other banana jacks like this. And of course the barrel power connector is not being used and I'm not really using all these switches for this particular demonstration but uh, what I wanted to do here is just show that we can make a lot of clean connections without creating a jungle on the, on the circuit board and it's really convenient to be able to hook up so many inputs different types of connector and this is just a simple circuit but the circuits that are monitoring and uh, interfacing to it would add a lot of complexity if we didn't have these neat interface cards, these BBC PCBs, so breadboard connector printed circuit boards.